Hello, this is Caveman again uh, from eBay and just some helpful hints. Uh, always remember this is just to take and help out a person if they're not real sure about uh, some of the things they see online, some of the things I sell, or maybe what their next step is um, with their slot cars and their tracks. Now, um, the reason you see pipe and, and containers in front of these different transformers and such is to take and give the uh, the appearance of the differences of uh, transformers can look a lot different they can be different in size and um, and you'd be surprised some small ones put out more than the larger ones and the large ones kind of give it an illusion that wow look at this it's a great big transformer so uh, a lot of times that's just not the case so understanding what you're seeing on the uh, labels and such uh, will help you a lot it'll also help you take and um, get your slot cars to run a little smoother sometimes or at least let you understand why they're not running real smooth so anyway we're gonna go left to right here and that first transformer which is right here okay um, that one there is a half amp 0.500 well the 500 doesn't mean a whole lot but that point in front of the five basically means one half amp and it puts out 12 volts okay um, the next one is a Carrera it's 14.7 volts or 14.8 volts and 0.700 amps so 0.7 amps not a whole amp now that little bitty one the third one is a full one amp well it's a whole lot smaller than the Carrera uh, transformer I'm not talking about Carrera at all I'm just talking about the transformer it's also 12 uh, volts so but it's one full amp the next one up is a Arton it's 1.9 amps almost 2 amps at 12 volts a little bit larger of course and then the, the next one, which is moderate in size, uh, which is a train transformer. And a lot of people say, well, we're talking about slot cars. These train transformers will work excellent for your slot car tracks. As long as you know how you're hooking them up and stuff, positive, negative, that kind of thing. They will work great. And you can turn the voltage down for a 6-volt car, or you can crank that puppy up to 14 and run 124 scale. Uh, it'll actually take and go as just about, I think that they'll push it as much as maybe 16 to 17 uh, volts. Some of them will actually put out 20, but most of the smaller ones and expensive ones will only put roughly anywhere 14, 15, 16, somewhere in that area. Uh, the last one, not trying to be funny or anything, that's a motorcycle battery. Now the cranking amps is the amps, you know, that you can pull out of that battery uh, for a certain amount of period now, but it's rated at 220 amps. That's quite a bit of power to kick over. It, it starts in 1100 Kawasaki, so uh, or excuse me, yeah, Kawasaki. And, but it's rated at 12 volts, even a full charge is 12.6. So when you hear people say, yeah, I've hooked up a car battery to my slot car track, that's why. It's not because they wanted to be funny or cool, but it's, in some respect, the cheapest absolute way to take and apply 12 volts to a slot car track and actually get fantastic results on every single lane as many as eight nine ten lanes you could run on that car or on that small motorcycle battery and it would run it quite a bit um, so the pipe and that one lid is an example of how much flow each one of those will take and give you to your track now when I say flow I'm talking about the power the push okay and that is how amps are measured. If you read it in watts, it's nothing against watts or anything like that, but you look for the amps when you're looking. Um, some of them may not say amps, but most of the time on the transformers, they, they're supposed to tell you all that. So here's the key, all right? The first one, which is half amp. Now, for a 143rd car, things like that, right? Um, half amp per car, eh, it's okay. It's not the greatest, but it's okay, all right? But here's the thing, if that car is going to take and pull that whole half amp, this is like a water pipe going to it, all right, the flow is going to go to that car and it's the same size as the, the amount of pressure and volume that it gets, okay, all right, so it runs it to the car, okay, now the thing is, is when it runs it to the car, you're getting exactly no more, no matter what you do here, no more than what this size is going to take and give that car. Here's the thing. When you take a put in second car on your track and you're still drawing from the exact same power supply, now you're asking that power supply 
for voltage and it actually will take in um, try to take and get as much both of these are going to draw just the same amount but when it gets up to here this has only got so much to give it so what happens both of the cars seem to be running okay this one here falls off the track and all of a sudden there's no flow here this car all of a sudden gets all the flow and it speeds up and so on and that's why that happens on your track it's kind of aggravating sometimes simply because um, you know one guy comes off the track and the other person is driving and they're close to a curve and all of a sudden they get a burst of power and their car goes off the, the track it wouldn't have but they wasn't ready for the burst of power so that's too small of a transformer for a slot car track okay now the next one which is a little closer okay but it's you know it's it's pushing close to an amp all right and it does better but it still doesn't have the full flow because these two cars are going to take and draw this amount from it, right? But it's only got this much here to give, all right? Now, as we go up in amps, you'll see this is the same thing. Same cars, same track, but we jumped up to a one amp supply, okay? Well, you can see, heck, that's more than enough. Both of those fit right inside there, okay? The amount of flow that they get from that, all right? So when these two cars are asking for power from this here, they're going to do a whole lot better. Can there still be a, a variation? Absolutely, they sure can. And when you're talking about 132nd cars, 124th cars, uh, depending on the weight of the car, it will draw more current. It will need more to take and move the car. So again, you're looking at the flow from here. So as you go up in amps, all right, you're gonna get better performance, better handling, I should say, and a little bit more power with the options as you go up to lose less power when one car comes off the track. Now, when you get up to 1.9 amps, okay, that's that's pretty decent because that's basically one amp per car. 143rd, that's excellent. They love that. They're they're done. You know, they're good to go. All right, 132nd, you start pushing it. Okay, but it will take and do a 132nd, 124th. There's not enough there. Uh, 124th, these pipes, if you want to call it that, right, are going to be a lot larger and it's going to want more. All right. Now, 6 amps. Okay. It's a train transformer. All right. Now, that 6 amps, okay, will power the heck out of the track. And the bottom line is, is that, you know what, you basically will not notice a variation when one of the cars come off. It just won't happen. Uh, you're going to get a constant flow of power and... Um, is six amps. Anything that pushes over an amp and a half per one of these small cars, you, you've got it made. Um, you've got it solved. That's not a problem. Now, when you take a look at the very expensive $180, $190 transformers that claim to be 10 amps or 20 amps, and they, they cost 170 bucks, well, yikes, that's a whole lot of money for maybe just, you know, your small slot car set. So why go there? Um, these inexpensive transformers, I'm just saying, right? I mean, I, I don't sell them, but the ones I have are used that I put together with kits and stuff sometimes. But you can get these for maybe 8 to $12, somewhere in that area. Sometimes a little bit more, uh, depending on the transformer. But, um, you know, it's going to take and do a great job for your slot car track, as long as you understand how to take and hook it up. So, and that's the positive-negative part of it, okay? Now, the last one, right, this is the people that have, you know, maybe four lanes, or they just want ultimate stuff, you know. I mean, here, here's the thing is, is you can take and draw many, many times off of this track for four lanes, eight lanes, and you can see that the same amount of flow, this thing is going to give you all kinds of possibilities, and until you actually get halfway filling that thing up with different lanes, the bottom line is, is that battery is just going to take and do whatever you want it to do. All right. So um, if you get a 10 amp power supply and you get it fairly inexpensive, hey, that will take and do you for a long, long time. You'll be good to go. Um, you might want to take and get one that goes up to um, maybe 18 volts, you know, for 124 scale. Um, believe me, the 124th will take and run on the 12 volt tracks and the 14 volt tracks. And they'll run fine on all that, but what you won't get is the whole shot capability uh, when you want to take and drift around a corner and you want to just kind of, you know, hit the gas a little bit, spin it around, and get the tires spinning. If you just have the 14 volts or even lower 12 volts, then what, what might happen is, is you're going to go around there and it won't spin the tires. It'll go faster, 
but it may not take and give you the whole shot and let you take and drift. All right. So drifting has a whole lot to the reserve power that you have available to uh, your track and, and your car. So anyway, that just basically explains these different transformers and what it means when you take and have different amperages. Okay. So if you were looking at a transformer and somebody can read how many amps output, not how many amps does it draw from the power line, how many amps output and how much voltage output, that will take and tell you a great deal. So, and also if you're just curious about something and asking a question about a transformer, feel free to take an email me at eBay. That's 123caveman and I'll do my best to take and help you out. Um, the other thing is, is that, uh, let's see here. I guess on this video we have enough time, but wire. There's all kinds of places to take and get wire, and you know, depending on what you're doing with the wire, there's all kinds of reasons you can take and have that you need some small wire for this or that. Um, sometimes you can just take wire from a transformer. This transformer, say for instance, it's dead, you cut it off, it gives you all that wire, okay? That's some good wire. You can take and extend uh, power to your track, possibly. Um, you can take and extend your own transformer, right? But the wire, why throw the wire away? Snip it off, put it in a box, throw it under your track or under your bed in that case, um, and you know, it's free to use. It, you didn't pay nothing for it. Same thing with this. You, you know, This is just <laughs> one of those uh, Christmas single bulbs you know that they put in windows and stuff or on top of the TV well once again get rid of that because we don't use it anymore and you've got more wire okay uh, you've got the end that you can take and use for power of course but you can cut this here and use it for an extension for your transformer to get that thing completely out of the way because people are tripping on it etc all right now there's all kinds of wire that you'll take and run across right from the old days and you know what why not use it Here's a phone. Who's got one of these in their house anymore? Well, I don't. Um, and this one here, and these are actually braided wires in this coil, right? But it, it gives you three wires, okay? And they are braided, okay? They're not solid lines, all right? But that's three wires, and they're small, easy to take and use. You can use that in some slot cars for the, maybe the, the lights that you install. Um, run it, you know, after you strip it because it's pretty easy to strip after you get it started. You just take that wire, hold on to it here, and pull, and it'll keep just stripping away. And so I get all this wire after it does a curly cue around all this, get it straightened up, and but I have all that wire and it's free to me. It was something I was going to throw away, okay? It's just free wire, all right? So, you know, once again, you know, that, that's just a lot of times we just don't see that. Okay, here's an extension for a phone, right? It goes into the back of the phone, and most of them, not all, have two wires on it, and those are also braided. Same thing as far as taking and pulling it apart, just pull on it and stuff, and it should take and split the, uh, the insulation. If it doesn't, it might be a little bit harder, depending on how thick that insulation is. But again, it's free wire. Now, how many people are plugging these into their computers anymore? They might if they have a real old printer, that kind of thing, or an application that just requires that. But these things here, on the most part, we don't use them for printers anymore. So why not take and use the wire? Well, there is a, just a ton of wire in these things. Look at this wire. Now, this wire is, in this case, okay, on this item, you can see it's a braided wire. It's not solid, okay? But I don't know, there's... 15, 20 different wires there. And I think this whole thing here that I've got is something like, I don't know, 15 foot long. So, you know, that is a lot of wire to grab, you know, 15 to 20 wires out of that when you strip it. Again, it's free wire. This wire is not heavy enough for certain applications, but if you're going to run lights uh, to your buildings, um, to other places on your track, your layout, you know, for trains, etc., it's, it's free wire. So, um, you know, why not? All right, a USB plug. All right, what we get basically they're all about the same scale, and in this case, there's four wires on there, right? They're all braided, okay, and so depending on how long it is, um, you can take and use it for um, this here wire is, is pretty flimsy as far as it goes, it's very flexible, all right. And the nice thing about that is it allows you to take and route it around in your slot car. 
uh, for LED lights, even the, the smaller bulbs. So anyway, there you go on that, you know, a USB plug. Uh, I think that's all the wires that I actually just cut up as an example. So that was just to kind of give you an idea of what you can take and do with some of that wire. Um, and, you know, just to kind of give you an idea. Now, there's other wire that you can actually purchase, okay? Now, this is just speaker wire, okay? Uh, let's see here. This one here is 18 gauge. So, you know, this wire, if you look real close, should be able to see there's a white mar mark on one side of it and then the other side it just doesn't have it. But when you strip the wire, okay, or you pull it apart, the nice thing about speaker wire, almost every one that I've ever grabbed hold of, it has a marking on it. So, um, this here wire's got the white stripe on it, this one does not, okay? Could you use that for a ground and this for a positive or this for a positive and this for a ground? As long as you keep current with no matter what you're hooking it to, you're good to go, okay? Now, this wire and this here gauge is 18 gauge is perfect for extending power on slot car tracks. You know, you got maybe a, a 30 or 40 foot track and somewhere in the middle somewhere you take and have a loss of power. I'll show you what you can take and do with this wire in just a moment. And, um, you know, it just helps the track get even voltage all the way around when you do that. But you can do it with inexpensive wire. Not some of the smaller wire that we have, not unless it's the size of the extension cords and so on. And then you have hookup wire, which most people will take and see this and remember it pretty much to take and be for train layouts. Okay, it's a two conductor wire. This is not stranded and it basically has a black and white to it, all right? And you can use this here for a lot of things, okay? But because it's solid, it is not flexible. And just like if you take something and bend it back and forth and back and forth a hundred times, say for instance, all right, you're gonna take and have that solid wire eventually break, okay? Where a braided wire will take and stay pretty flexible depending on the type and how heavy the braids are. So those are just wires that you can take and you'll come across. Now. I'm going to pick this thing up, and this track is just an illusion of, but the bottom line is, is, you know, we're trying to figure out exactly how we would take and go about extending it. Now, let's just say, even though this is a bunch of track, this is the underside, of course, and let's just say this is 40 foot long. Maybe it's a drag racing track that you set up. All right, well, if you use that speaker wire and you take and hook it up, the two lines to your positive negative up under your track. Here's the, the unique thing. Your power intake track, take a couple of them, right? And then just solder those wires right in, like so, all right? And then as you go along without even cutting this wire, you can come, come way up here, all right? And take and, and you, can, you can cut the wire, but why do that? Just take and split it open, pull back on the insulation both sides, and go ahead and solder one here, one there. Again, just keeping the white on the same exact side. So when you do that for two lanes, okay, up underneath your track, all right, you're taking this here power and, and you're renewing it every time you make contact, all right, just like as if this was the power intake track and not back here. So speaker wire will take and do it's a trick. It's the least expensive that I'm aware of that you can take and do that with that is continuous. Um, continuous is fine. You don't have to go that direction as far as it goes. But the speaker wire that I'm referring to, uh, like the wire that's sitting there, um, you know, this is just an example, okay? The 14 gauge, uh, the same thing I've got there is $19 for a roll, but it's 100 foot long. Um, 16 gauge is, uh, looks like $28, but it's 250 foot long. Um, the 18 gauge for 50 foot is about $5.50. Okay, um, if you want to take and go with about as strong as you should take and go, go with the 14 gauge. It, they also sell it in uh, 50 foot lengths. You just determine how much you need to take and, you know, uh, extend the power on your track to take and make it more even throughout the entire track. And that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. Bye now.